do you have any plans of having the manga successful uh, where you're from? Uh, of course. Um, by March next year, 2004, it's going to be at the coming convention, Printed Life, and then HIF, and then... Okay, so then I plan on taking the book to three cities. Um, I plan on taking the book to Lagos here, Lagos Comic Convention, um, Ibadan Comic Convention, which is a city close to Lagos, and Abuja, and Abuja, which is the um, capital of Nigeria in general. So I actually plan for this to go out, and and if it doesn't go viral, I, I understand because this is like my first manga that I'm putting out there. So then I'll just learn from it and how I can make the next one better because you know I told you I'm creating more of like a graphic novel for myself so mm. I'm just trying to see how this one goes and what I can learn from it to make my next mangas better and more famous like like to be honest I don't know which one is going to get famous this could be the famous one this could be one that could like open doors for me like publishers might just be like okay I want you to draw something else for me but not this one this could be the one that I could just be like, oh, I've seen your work. Yeah, I love you. Can you come and do something for me? Because, you know, everything, I believe, everything that you do, nothing is a waste. Everything plays a role. Because even if you draw a manga that has zero views, at the end of the day, it's going to teach you how to get more views on your manga. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah, that's just what I feel. So, I, so like, if this one doesn't go viral, I'm not going to push it too much because i see a lot of publishers trying to rub their manga on everyone's faces no i'm just i'm mm. just gonna let everyone know that if you don't want to read it it's fine if you want to read it make sure you support to the highest that's just what i want i feel like that's kind of the uh the way of marketing you can't you have to be at some point you have to be annoying about it because there's so many eyeballs on the internet. As you said before, everybody's on their phones. Everybody's everybody's looking looking for something to entertain themselves, looking for that junk food. And I there's and I people can see that as a negative thing, but the I think it takes like a certain person to see that and say, "Oh, maybe I can slip a little bit of uh medicine with all of the sugar that people are eating." And they, because if you're, if you're saying, oh man, this is a good thing, but I don't know, it's up to you if you want to watch it. A lot of people are going to be like, all right, I'm not going to watch it because a lot of people want <laughs> in, instant gratification. <laughs> so, but, you, but you know, the thing, the thing is that, well, not everyone will watch, right? But those that watch, they're going to be super loyal to you. That is true. That's, that's the thing, because I'm basically not looking for thousands of followers if i can have okay so like unlike someone that has like 500 thousand subscribers on youtube and having 1.6 views that's mm -hmm. terrible for me i prefer to have 2,000 subscribers on youtube and have 1.9k views steadily i know that okay this is what i'm expecting from my loyal friends i'm, I'm not worried about numbers i'm worried about people who are loyal like no matter what is out there right like they would rather pick my stuff rather than picking attack on titan to mm -hmm. pick my stuff even if bleach is there even if yusuke murata is out there saying come read one punch man they say nah i think i'll go with falling giants by diana shirobi you know yeah so that's just what i want like i'm not really chasing numbers i'm chasing loyal people that love it for itself and that even love me as a creator for who i am because i guess I keep on saying it. Some companies make it so annoying that I just unfollow them on Instagram because, like, okay, so you're advertising, right? And then you try to advertise tricks. It didn't work out. And then you come out saying, um, this is a good black character. If you want to see black characters in action, read it. If you want to see first female um, shonen, OC, please read the manga. If, if you're not feminist, blah, blah, blah. Like, come on. That's just crazy. Like, personally, I read one of their mangas just so I don't seem racist, you know? 
because he came to me and was like, read blah blah. So like, okay, how can I you feel? How can you be? Right? <laughs> how can you feel like you can be like I'm African? What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 yeah, so like that's how it is, right? That's yeah. how it is. So I'll just like so like so then I don't want my advertisement to get annoying. I just still want to put in consistency and let people see the artwork themselves and mm-hmm. appreciate it for what it is. Even if my heart is not there yet, I know that at least my story is getting there and then like just like Mob Psycho one hundred, the art was crap. Like I would beat my chest and tell you I draw more than that dude, you know what I'm saying? But no, I mean, like, I have better art than that dude, but you know what I'm saying? But, like, now he's worldwide with Yusuke Murata, even if the art wasn't good. So, that I'm saying, like, I just want to put in more consistency and then let people see it for what it is. Because I see a lot of people, manga, for me, the story is not there, but the art is really killing it. So then I just buy the manga just to look at the art. Like, okay, the art is good. So then, for me, that's bad for me. Like, I'd rather have a work at work and then let the story impact your life than to mm-hmm. have a very good artwork and then let the story be garbage. Artwork over story. I mean, story over artwork, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my mind was a little way crazy, but I wanted to touch on uh, the reason why public, why my I think that the reason why publishers are so annoying when it comes to advertising on social media and as I was, uh, and I think this comes from me looking a lot into marketing. Uh, and one of the things that I found out or one of the statistics that I keep hearing is that social, like the followers you get on social media, they only see 10% of the posts that you make on their feed around that exactly Exactly. i may like the the numbers may be different for each platform but it's very very low so social media is more interested in pushing your posts to new people over the people that follow you and I feel I perceive that these companies understand that, so they'll post again the same things again and again and again, uh, because they know that not everybody is going to look at it, or if the people, that- because consistency consistency is key. Uh, and I would prob and I would say be very wary. Uh, how old are you? I'm 16. 16? Okay. I'd say be very wary of the numbers on social media. I'm not saying that all those numbers are a lie, but they are vanity. They are very vain. <laughs> of just, course they are. Yeah, just but... be- yeah, just because you see somebody with a million do- million followers doesn't mean they got a million dollars. There's so exactly. many influencers that has a lot of eyeballs, but they don't know how to convert those eyeballs into dollar signs. Of course. What I what I would recommend, you don't have to take my recommendation at all, but I would say look <laughs> into getting a newsletter because Speaking of new, I'll, I'll do the plug-in later, um, because I was gonna do a, I was gonna do a plug, but I can do that later or in the middle of a, well, the middle of this podcast. I can edit that in, um, maybe. All right. But the idea of the idea is social media is casting that net, but the newsletter is to make sure that everybody that you. Everybody that you send that email to goes out to every email, uh, everybody, every email that they, uh, that you have and social media is casting that net and that email list is reeling them in. It's getting the dedicated people because one day you, you may get 3000 YouTube followers. And the thing is. YouTube can decide to not like you the next day or they want to change up the algorithm and 
those loyal people, the loyal people that you have, the 3,000 loyal people, will not see your posts anymore. <laughs> I, rem- <laughs> I remember there was such, a t- such times during YouTube that I was watching a lot of podcasters and it was nearly routine that everybody said click the bell because you to make sure that youtube sees your sees my posts sees my videos or like every every website every social media has an avenue where they want to squeeze more money out of you just so they just so those social media sites can do their job properly and it's ridiculous (laughs) So I would advise, I would highly advise trying to find, finding ways to making sure people can find you no matter where, what happens to any of your social medias, because one of the, one of the theories that I'm trying to go for is if you can make, like, you don't need a million people. If you can get a thousand people uh that's that you can learn how to monetize like you have a career there of course absolutely and one of the main things that artists are pretty bad at is learning how to how to monetize themselves or advertise themselves so and i think that was the main thing i wish somebody would tell me at that age at 16 and plus, I mean, you're you're already hitting up conventions at 16, and that's, well, 17, because you're doing it next year. And that's insane. Yeah. Was, that's insane. Congratulations to you on that. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Like, uh, that was, I only did that. I only started doing that this year, so. <laughs> cool. but it's, you're doing, you're, like, with the head start that you got going on, yeah, I think I'm push. I'm not. I'm not from Lagos, but I'm pushing for your success too. Sure, of course. I appreciate all the support. I will appreciate all the support, and of course, I could come to your city to support you once in a while. You know. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. 